Love doesn't have to be so complicated. This is Robert Manny, host of Guys Guys TV, and this week my special guest is author Kelly Miller. We're going to talk about love hacks to help your relationship go smoother. It all starts right here, right now on Guys Guys TV. You can also catch me on KCAA Radio here in Southern California, Guys Guys Radio, my worldwide podcast, and we're on UK Health Radio all weekend long. Guys Guys TV, Guys Guys Radio, thanks for your support. Okay, Guys Guys Radio, it's time for the interview portion of our show and welcoming in our YouTube and Rumble viewers to the show. And we've got a very special guest today. We're going to talk about relationships, all the issues that relationships have, and also love hacks. My special guest is Kelly Miller, an in-demand psychotherapist for individuals, couples, and families. Kelly specializes in relationships, and that's kind of a foundation of Guys Guys Radio. She's been the host of All Things Relationships on Balance by Nature TV, a co-host on LA Talk Radio, a relationship expert on Sirius and wikihow.com. She's contributed to national and regional publications as sought after speaker. And the new book is called Love Hacks. So today's couples, they want solutions. And you know therapy is important, but they want it now. They want it fast, just like everything else. And so Love Hacks offers simple, effective, quick tricks, if you will, that address the most common relationship problems anywhere anytime in the quick fix era. So I welcome to the show, the first time on Guys Guys Radio, Kelly Miller, LCSW. Welcome to Guys Guys Radio. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Well, I, I guess relationship problems never go away, but I love the fact that you put together a book that's right in the times where it's fast, easily digestible, and common sense uh, common sense action that anybody can take in a relationship, even if you're, even if it's one partner, these tips work. So let's start out with kind of what's going on in relationships right now. Over 50% of people over 50 are single. The divorce work uh, rate is over 50% and people just don't know how to get along and they're easily distracted, I think, nowadays. So why do you believe it's harder now for couples to work together than even 10 years ago, Kelly? Sure. I think you nailed it. There's so many more distractions today and that makes it really hard for us to connect with our partners because our phones are dinging. We've got emails to check. We just don't have that quality time that we used to with our partners. So I am a big proponent of when you are with your partner or your loved one, just put your phone away, put the distractions away so that you can really have that eye contact and focus on each other. So I think you really, you really nailed it. It's just, we're, we're just so distracted today and we don't have that, that quality essence that we used to. I think I, I learned the hard way after a series of uh, relationships that ultimately didn't work, but I always think in a relationship, if you have some time together, cherish mm -hmm. that time, embrace it. And then if, you know, yes. ultimately it doesn't work out forever, that's sure. okay. Not everything, it has to be for, forever. Um, I had a, I got a lesson when I went out with my wife, the first, uh, we went out about three times and I said to her, you know what, I've been in a lot of relationships and they haven't gone as long as sometimes I wanted them to, and I want to be a good boyfriend and I really like you. What can I do to do that? And she mm. put her fork down, we were having dinner and she said, pay attention. Wow. And I, I said, that. anything else? And she said, no. So talk to us about being present, the importance of that and paying attention. Sure. It rang in my brain up till yeah. this day. And I always have to keep reminding sure. myself. Sure. Well, first, I want to commend her for stating what she needed, <laughs> which I think is great, right? I think a lot of times we're kind of scared to say what we need, but that woke you up and she was advocating for what she needed. And she saw something between you and thought, okay, this could really work, but I need to state what I need. We're not mind readers with our partners. So I love that piece. But yeah, I mean, I think we do. We need to focus in on each other, what we're saying. And in Love Hacks, I talk about, there's the issue of my partner never listens to me. And there's a real difference between listening and hearing. And I, hearing is involuntary, right? We hear the dog barking. We hear the doorbell. Listening is intended, right? You are focused on your partner and what they're saying. So a lot of times people think, oh, well, I'm hearing my partner, but you're not paying attention to what they're saying. You're, they don't feel seen. They can tell you're maybe listening, but they're not, they're not feeling like you're get what getting what they're saying. So it's super important that we take that time. And another tool or hack that I say in the book is we need to ensure this communication. We need to sit down and say, hey, wait, 
is is that right? Did I get that right? You know, and 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 make that time to communicate and get what your partners wants to communicate with you. Got it. My special guest on Guys Guys Radio, Kelly Miller. We're talking about the book here, Love Hacks, Simple Solutions to Your Most Common Relationship Issues. And I think what's brilliant about the book is you broke down 15 common occurrences and have three alternate solutions that work together or can work individually. So would you mind if we got into some of those, some of those, some of these issues? Um, number one is what I'm hearing is listening. We just got touched on it a little bit. Yes. Uh, the I versus you statements, and which is mm -hmm. kind of like uh, also kind of what about is when people have a kind of a disagreement, they get into, um, you know, you're not listening to me. You did this. Maybe I did this, but you did that. I, I run into that sometimes still. What is the solution for that, the listening sure. issue? Right. So what typically happens is partners use the you statements. Like you said, you did this, you were late. So immediately you're blaming your partner. And what happens is people feel shut down. When they hear the you and they feel blamed, they're immediately shut down. So what I talk about in Love Hacks is using I statements, right? Where we get vulnerable and say, hey, I feel sad that you were late. That, that lands so much better on our partner's ears because it's about what we're feeling, not what they did, right? They don't feel shamed. They don't feel criticized. It's like, oh, my partner feels upset about what happened. So it's a really simple shift, but it'll make things so much easier with your partner, not just one really quick hack. I love it. Um, here's another one. Arguing, we argue too often over little things. And little things, as as we know, Kelly, can become big things very quickly if there's some inner resentment or some type of something percolating beneath the surface. So mm -hmm. um, you talk about calling timeouts like we do for the kids sometimes. And I thought that was really cool. Like, can we come back to that argument we're having in a little bit because if it's getting a little bit frenzy and heated? Talk to us about that. Yeah, sure. So I think when people think of timeouts, they think of something punitive, right? I did something wrong. And it's not about that. It's really about, hey, let's recenter. We're dysregulated, right? We're heated, we're angry, which happens. That's okay. It happens in all relationships. We get frustrated, but it's just recognizing, okay, when I'm dysregulated, it'll be helpful to have a timeout from this. We're both going to calm down. And then again, we'll both be more receptive after the timeout, because we're both clear headed versus angry and frustrated. So yeah, I recommend, you know, a few hours of just taking a break when you start to feel heated, or you notice your partner's heated. And you reconvene after that, after you've gone for a walk or settled, and then you have that conversation in a much more fruitful outcome, because you both are calm again. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had an issue on my own where I've tried that technique before reading the book. And uh -huh. um, I got it didn't work. My partner just kind of ran right over that and wanted to get, wanted to keep going sure. and was not hearing that. So what would be your advice if you are trying to implement a timeout? It's got to mm -hmm. be two-way timeout. Absolutely. You can't, it's not like in football where you call a timeout right. and that's it. Both partners exactly. have to be willing to call, okay, we're getting heated now. What, what can you do if your partner's sure. all riled up and doesn't want to take a timeout? Right. So my first piece of advice is establish these rules before things get heated, ah. right? So yeah, not during the argument. It's like, hey, you know what I was thinking about it? No, this is neutral ground. Hey, I've been thinking about it. I think we can communicate even more effectively. And one way is if we have timeouts and let's both agree that when one of us calls a timeout, we're going to respect that, right? This is not a rejection. I think what you're describing with your previous partner was she felt rejected by that. And so it's again, making note of that this is not about rejection. It's actually the opposite. It's us coming together again. And so we just need to make a commitment that if either one of us calls a timeout, we're going to adhere to it. And again, this is not a uh, you know, break from this conversation entirely. This is just a break for now. And then we'll come back and talk about it. So I think it's getting that buy-in from that partner and understanding and then saying to them, I'll do the same for you at any point. If you feel ready to take a time out, I will respect that. That sounds very fair. Um, I will try that. And uh, if I run into that again, Sex, mm -hmm. the overarching sex issue. Now, as yes. couples go along over time, uh, of course, there's usually a lot of intimacy up front when people are getting to know each other and the thrill of intimacy, sure. physical intimacy is great. And then over time, and especially if you have a kid or something, like sometimes the dynamic changes in a, in a couple's relationship. Maybe the guy wants more sex th than the woman, or it could be the woman wants more sex than right. the guy. Or guy, right. guys, as they age, sometimes have issues. 
So mm -hmm. how, how do we how do we navigate that? What are your hacks for that, Kelly? Yes. So it's very normal for sex to ebb and flow in a relationship. So it's the first thing I want to say. I think people think like, oh my God, you know, worried. No, no, no. It's it's normal, right? There's going to be times where you're going to be having more of a libido than less, times of stress, of course. So that's the first thing. But it, I think where I get concerned is if it's been diminished for a long time or if one partner is really unhappy with the lack of sex. And so I think the first thing to look at is, is there a resentment? Oftentimes when couples come into my office, I mean, that's really what I'm hearing is this emotional piece of I'm hurt by something my partner did. I'm angry by something my partner did. And there's nothing like resentment and anger that kills libido more. So mm -hmm. the only way out is through. And so we really have to get underneath that emotional piece for the person to feel physically comfortable again. So that's, that's where I would look kind of first emotionally. And then you're right after, you know, been together for a while, of course, it's natural. It's not as, not as exciting. So we need to bring back some of that excitement. And what I recommend is adrenaline filled activities, do something different, rock climbing, roller coaster with your partner, or even if it doesn't have to be scary, you know, just something new, woodworking, something to bring back that newness will help. Oh, I think that's fantastic. My special guest on Guys Guys Radio is the amazing Kelly Miller. The book is Love Hacks. Um, money. Money is another issue in relationships where um, you can share the same values, but you might have different money behaviors. Maybe one partner is really knows how to manage money better than the other or manages it in a completely different way where somebody, you know, people think money is energy and sometimes they work with it differently. One person could right. be a spendthrift, the other person could save. Mm -hmm. And that can create, if you're not on the same page there, that can create serious issues. What are some hacks to, to fix that? Yes. So I think you're right on. I mean, I, I see that a lot where one is a spender, one is a saver, and it's like, how do you do it? So the, the, the main thing I recommend is we need to sit down and talk about each other's goals. I mean, I think a lot of times partners just come together and it's like, they don't even talk about, hey, what are our long-term goals? What are our short-term goals? So I have an acronym that I developed called CLOSER, right? And so C is communicate and collaborate about you know these goals. L is like list those goals, right? So is your short-term goal you know to have a vacation and long-term goal is to save on a house? Um, o is like organizing these things, right? How do you sit down and let's let's line by line do that. S is like setting expectations, right? Like how much can we afford and can we, you know, maybe we can't go on the Bahamas vacation, but we could do like a weekend getaway. Um, e is envisioning. So what, what do you both envision as a unit, as a couple? Because it could be different independently. And then R is revisiting those goals later. So we can kind of do this. And then six months, let's see how are we doing on this? Um, and I think that's kind of the first start is establishing some of that structure. I think people are so afraid to talk about money, so taboo, but but we need to we need to really talk about it in order for things to to be together and and a unit. Yeah, it's it can be challenging, and I think communication, two way communication, is so important there. Um, we touched yeah. on this a little bit with the the sexual issue, but after kids are born, it can affect the sex life a little bit. I think everybody would kind of agree to that. Uh, for a temp for, for a period of time and but also your family activities the activities your lifestyle changes i know when uh you know my son was born i, mm -hmm. I stopped playing golf basically right. because i figured i'll pick it up later in life again and i love that i played like all the time and it can golf can be a relationship killer because when you go out to a, if one partner plays golf you're gone for the day because yes. you play a four round four hour round of golf and then you go to the bar and you talk about every hole with your golfing buddies right. and then by sure. the time you get home it's like yes. you want to eat or something and you you know your partner might say hey, you know you're not there you're not present now when you have kids it changes because then you have the kids schedule there's so much stuff going on how mm -hmm. do couples maintain the kind of the we time when yes. you're doing so much for your child or children sure I think what happens is the couple is no longer the priority, right? It makes sense. The kid is now the priority. So we need to bring back that the couple is the priority. Both can exist, right? The kids can be priority and the couple, but we need that strong foundation. I am a huge proponent of date nights and it needs to be scheduled. We can't let this relationship just go by the wayside. So I always say to my couples, one person plans one week, 
the next person plans the next week. And then there's an element of surprise. The partner doesn't know, oh, what are we doing? And then it's not on one person to plan. But I think that's essential. And then going back to those activities that you loved as a couple. Right. Let's say you started dating, you loved ice skating or, you know, scavenger hunts or whatever that is and bringing some of those back. Um, and I know it's hard to get a babysitter. So, you know, get creative. Right. If you have friends with kids, hey, I'll take your kids one night. You do, do you mm -hmm. know, we switch or, you know, um, yeah, just hiring like, you know, a local college kid who can kind of help out or whatever it takes. But I think that we need to make it essential and a priority again. Okay. Let me throw you a little bit of a curveball in that. I've interviewed a lot of uh, um, female dating coaches and relationship coaches, and to a person, they've all said that women want men to be men in the best sense of the word. You know, uh -huh. confident, not arrogant, comfortable in their own skin, respectful, fun, funny, and um, coming up, be proactive, come up with ideas. Because sure. in today's dating landscape, I think what can happen is the, the women are now long, long overdue acknowledgement and recognition in the work they're doing. And sometimes they come home and it's hard to turn off the a type A switch. Yes. What, what are your, what's your advice to, uh, and this is not for necessarily married couples, but just couples mm -hmm. in general, maybe new couples sure. who there's a changing dynamic in the workplace. It's always evolving, but it's ha happened very quickly in the past 20 years, long overdue, but a lot mm -hmm. of stuff has happened fast. And yes. it's changed the dynamic and you layer on that uh, the technology of uh, online dating where right. it's created a situation where men can become lazy yes. and they can sit at home in their tidy whities and meet beautiful women online. They can. Right. That's just the way it is. So then sure. they have a type A girlfriend who's like working it all day at work. She comes home. She has some ideas what she wants to do. He comes up with some ideas. She's like, well, let's do this instead. And the guy just sits back and figures, well, I'll let her be in charge of everything. And right. that doesn't work though, because ultimately the woman is going to say, what do I need him for? He's not bringing anything new yes. to the party. So yes. what, that's a big, I'm throwing a big one on your. Yeah. Right I mean, there, I think Kelly. you are, you are right. It is an issue. And I think the, the women in this scenario that you're describing need to step back a little bit. There's a lot of masculine energy that you're describing of uh, women who are working. And so it's like, okay, we need to put that aside and let the, the men have their masculine energy and, and you just sit back for a little bit. So my first advice is for the women to just, Hey, sit back. Like everything's going to be okay. And letting go of some of that control. Cause what I'm hearing is women who's like, I'm scared. If I don't plan this, it's not going to happen or it's not going to turn out right. And it's like, no, you've got to, you've got to let go of some of that control and, and be okay that it might not be what you envision, but to, to allow the man in this relationship to feel purposeful. Cause that's a huge part of it, right? Mm -hmm. That, and, and then they feel good and they're taking care of their partner. So I think that's the first piece. And then I think that second piece is that, yeah, it's important for the man in this, in this particular scenario to step up and to do that and to say, hey, you know what? You planned a lot. Let me take care of this. I got this, right? And, there's, and, and then that way the woman can sit back and, okay, I'm taken care of. He's got this, right? There's that confidence you were talking about. That's fantastic. Um, great advice. How about, you know, I always think, Kelly, that um, couples benefit when both both individuals, both partners have their own interests and have their Absolutely. own education and are continue to learn and grow as a person mm -hmm. or grow as people and then bring that into the relationship to fit in however it may fit in. Now, maybe one partner likes, likes to make sourdough bread and the other person likes mm -hmm. to eat it, but that's cool. They're both bringing right. something to a relationship and appreciation and also somebody's doing that. But uh -huh. it seems to me that people have to have their own lives, even the, even if they're in a couple. For sure. Oh my gosh. I can't recommend this enough. I mean, you need to be comfortable with you first and foremost, obviously, you know, we hear that all the time, but I think it's sexy to see our partner have a passion, right? I mean, there's something exciting about that. I mean, that's kind of what drew us in the first place, right? We see our partners, they're thriving. And so, right, you don't want to get lazy in that or lose that. I mean, that passion is sexy. So I think if you can view it that way, that helps. Now, um, another kind of big overarching issue to any relationship, we touched on it briefly, but I think mm -hmm. it's so important. That is kind of anger and underlying re resentment that can build up over time. And often, yes. and correct me if I'm wrong, Kelly, what can often happen is the guy's oblivious and he doesn't know that his partner is resentful. Uh -huh. And then right. he gets blindsided and dumped. 
And he's like, what happened? And then he, he figures it out, but it's too late because even right. if he's going to fix it, it's over. Cause when the woman says, that's it, that's it. In, in many right. instances, talk to us about that, the whole anger resentment thing, what mm -hmm. creates it? What are right. some of the telltale signs? What can yeah. guys do to pay attention and realize, Hey, sure. she doesn't, I don't have a happy camper uh, on my side here. Yeah. So I think it's a two part process. And number one is kind of what you said at the beginning. I loved that your wife said that to you. She knew, Hey, I need this in order for this relationship to work. So we can be proactive. So if you're recognizing, Hey, I'm not getting something from my partner, please speak up before that resentment happens. So state it. if you notice, Oh, you know, my partner's distracted. Okay. It's now time for me to say, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm noticing you're not paying attention as much. You know, would you mind giving me that undivided attention? So that's the first piece. But if it's too late for that, I think then you talk about it as soon as it comes up, like, hey, you know, it's been several months and I've noticed that, you know, you're just distracted and I'm just not feeling that connection. So you talk about it as soon as you can so that it doesn't build and build and you don't stick your head in the sand and hope that everything's going to work out or a partner should know. I hear that a lot. Like, well, my partner knows me well. He should know or she should know. No, our partners are not mind readers. So you have to communicate that. Um, and then it's forgiving, right? I mean, we have to remember we're not perfect. Our partners are not perfect. We're not perfect. So if you do have this resentment brewing and your partner is remorseful, it's time to forgive and say, okay, they're not perfect people. And it's okay to, to let this go and, and see that they can improve going forward. Now, you mentioned uh, uh, paying attention and also uh, putting the phone down. So yes. social media is so prevalent in our lives. Uh, depends on your generation, but it's still mm -hmm. everybody, once they get addicted, they're addicted. And we are carrying around this addiction with us at all times. And it can become an issue from uh, not paying attention or yeah. some of the behavior that people have. You know, you got a little, for a guy, if you're a guy, you've got a little porn device with you at all times. It's called social media and you can get a lot of it on there. And there's a lot on the flip side, there's a lot of, people flaunting themselves on there too, looking for the attention. There's, there's no there's, shortage. There's no, it's like, it's incredible. Yeah. So yeah. how do couples manage the social media? Because, you know, what yes. if the guy's taking a little peek at the pretty ladies on there and she catches right. him, she's like, that's not cool. And it, that right. can create a problem. And it's like, well, I'm just looking at the menu, honey. I'm not, uh, you know, right. Right. There's like a lot of problems that can happen in there. And of course, yeah. social media can be a great tool and can help right. us reach people and make sure. connections and rekindle old connections of friendships yes. and so forth. What are your, sure. what's your advice in terms of how couples yeah. can manage the social media landscape? Sure. So I think a lot of people have different boundaries around it, right? There are going to be some people who have no issue. There are going to be people who have a big issue. And so again, that is a conversation that I highly recommend that you have with your partner of, hey, what works for us? Does following influencers, is that acceptable? Does reaching out to an ex-partner, is that okay? We're friends. I mean, these are really tough conversations, but I'd rather partners talk about it right away rather than kind of wait and see. And then if there is a concern of an overuse of social media in love hacks, I have a social media question year where is it impacting the relationship and where couples can do that or even individuals can kind of take this test to see, okay, wow, there is, there's an addiction here. And I, you know, and I didn't realize how much is impacting my relationship. Um, so that chapter is really dedicated to that because I think it is a, unfortunately a big issue amongst relationships. You know, when it comes to online dating also, there's a lot of mixed signals there where people meet online and they start going out and then people are double, they're, they're this, they keep dating and it's kind of a natural thing. And maybe one partner is like not dating. I got caught when I was, uh, my, my wife came online. She had a free, her sister said, go online, three free mm -hmm. days on match. And uh, mm -hmm. she winked at me and we met and, and that was it. But after a while, we were together for a couple of weeks and, mm -hmm. uh, she said, I see you, you're still on, online there. And I said, well, how, if you saw me, then you're online too. <laughs> so, I, so I say touche, but anyhow, I thought about it and I said, well, what is your thought? And she said, well, why don't we just go out with each other? And then if it doesn't work, you can go out with whoever you want and I'll do the same. And I thought about that and it made such sense where people juggle relationships yes. when they're single so much where it's, it's, it's hard to not do that. But it's important that you don't overindulge that you so many people dive in the deep end of online dating. Yeah, I'm sure yes. you deal with online dating issues all the time. So oh, what's 
Talk to us about yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's so many options out there. It is so hard not to get overwhelmed. And then there's this, you know, what's behind door number two? Door number one looks great, <laughs> but like what's what's behind, door, you know, and we can get so intrigued. And so I, I'm a big proponent of start with one person at a time. It doesn't mean you have to be exclusive, but I think it's just really hard to focus on multiple people at once. I mean, it's like, wait, where are you from? What, we, you know, you, you get it all mixed up. So I think if you can just start with one person at a time so that you can put all of your focus there and then see, and then, okay, I like this person or I don't, or I want to continue. And then, cause I, I, I think multiple dating is just very difficult and, and complicated. My special guest on Guys Guys Radio, Kelly Miller. The book is Love Hacks, Simple Solutions to Your Most Common Relationship Issues. We're talking, we're covering a lot of ground. So thank yeah, you, Kelly. Of um, course. You also have a term, the fast food communication method. What is that all about? So if you think about when you go to a fast food drive through the employee reads back your order and says, okay, you got fries, McFlurry, and it's even on the screen, right? So they are ensuring that communication. I want to make sure I get this right. And I want partners to do that same thing within relationships. I want there to be that assurance. But yes, I, I heard what you said correctly. So what I teach couples is after there's some sort of topic to say, reflect back to your partner, what I'm hearing you say is, and then they reflect back. And so not only does this ensure that the communication is accurate, but it also validates the partner right away. The partner feels heard. Okay, you heard me. They're not immediately defensive. They're not trying to you know, prove their point. They're actually taking that moment from me. I brought up a concern. They're reflecting back and that makes me feel seen and heard. So it's really simple, but it's, it's so effective. I've got to think though, you need to be careful and how often you, how and how often you deploy that because you might be accused of you know, like, you're patronizing me now. You keep saying that Right, right. Keep repeating what I said. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's almost like you're right. I think like one time might not be, you know, they'll they might not notice it, but you're right. But they're doing it repeatedly, so I think it's just, and maybe it's just stating, hey, I want to make sure that I get everything you say correct. So you might be hearing me repeat back, right? And then that partner, oh, okay, they're really they're trying here, and there that. might not be that negative view. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, trust is a big issue, and I guess trust mm -hmm. is connected to cheating, but let's talk about trust first. How do we create trust in a relationship and what happens when trust is broken? Yes, so trust absolutely has to be earned, that's for sure. So it's not like a magic button, right? So how is what does that look like in a relationship? It's doing what you're saying. It's following up on your actions. It's all of that so that partners can start to build that. Oh, okay, they said they're gonna meet me here, they did it. They said they're gonna work on this issue, they're doing it. They said they're not going to go online um, dating anymore. They're not, right? And so that's how that start of it is. And then if it's broken, which often occurs, it's, you know, I, I have like a five-step process with either infidelity or the broken trust. And that first one is, is to take accountability. So if you messed up, you own that, right? I am so sorry. You know, I cheated on you. You are taking full responsibility, then you express remorse and you talk about how sad you are. You know, I am so sorry. I, I really messed up. You acknowledge the harm. You know, I, I realized that I've, I've damaged this relationship. You commit to change. You know, this isn't going to happen again. And then you request forgiveness. And again, that's requesting, right? You're not demanding. I mean, this is going to take time for a partner to learn to trust you again. And those steps will help. Who's Who do you find... Uh... Kind of a random question, more forgiving, the, the men or, or the women? Oh, that's such a good question. I feel like it's half and half. I've seen both. I have seen really tough women and I've seen really tough men. So I, I, I'd go 50-50. What about okay. you? What have you seen? I think it all depends on the what, what the definition is of cheating. And I think okay. for men, and correct me if I'm wrong, Kelly, men think cheating is physical. Yeah. For sure. That's it. If you're doing right. something with another guy physically, that's cheating. Yes. For right. women, I think often it can become if you're sharing emotional intimacy with another yeah. woman, that's mm -hmm. cheating. Right. And it's a little bit different. Um, of course, they're not going to want their guy physically cheating. But right. in a way, the emotional aspect is equally as important as the physical right. cheating and sometimes yes. with women because it's a different type of closeness, but right. equally important. For sure. 
I think you make a really good distinction. I think you're right. I think the women are more attuned to, okay, is he having an emotional affair? That feels deeper to me than the physical piece versus I think you're right. Men, it's like, you know, it's just, very, it's more cut and dry. Um, but both are hurtful. I think that's the takeaway, right? Both can right. be hurtful. And so we need to work on the repair if that happens. What What is your overarching advice for couples? You've, you've worked with so many different people. Um, mm -hmm. What are the... What are the top three issues and what is the advice that you give people, uh, the way you work with them to address these top three issues? Yeah, I mean, so the top three are, are in love hacks. And I think the first one we touched upon was really that listening, right? My partner's not listening to me. And so we talked about the fast food communication rule and um, the I statements. I think that's going to be key. Um, the other one is, you know, we're not having sex anymore. And so one thing that aside from the resentments is one thing I teach couples who haven't had sex in a long time is something called sensate focus therapy. And that's a type of therapy that doesn't focus on orgasm or finishing. And, you know, it's, it's more about, Hey, what is this experience? Like, what's the sensations? Like let's connect with our partner on a physical level where, it's not about the outcome. It's just about the present moment and kind of coming back to that. And I think that helps a lot where, especially couples who are maybe afraid to sort of embark on sex again, it feels scary and overwhelming. So that's a really easy way to tap into that. And another one that we haven't touched upon, which I hear quite often is like, I do so many more chores than my partners. Ah, uh -huh. I hear that all the time. And so to me, that's a really simple hack of let's create a chore chart. Let's you know, and we'll alternate every week, you know, week one, you're cleaning the toilets and, and this, and then week two, we switch um, and we can make it fun. We can, we can make it exciting. Let's put the timer on. And for 30 minutes, let's both do our chores and then come back and see who finishes first. And, you know, you can do all sorts of fun. And I wrote that in love hacks, like of ways to make it more exciting. It doesn't have to be this dreaded thing. It's like, okay, let's work together as a team here. Cause we are a team and, you know, we can make our dwelling the most clean and, and uh, fresh, you know, place if we, if we work together here. Yeah. I think, um, and correct me again, if I'm wrong, I think with, uh, with the chores, mm -hmm. guys are taking on a lot of chores that maybe their dads didn't take on. Like, I don't yes. remember my dad doing the dishes. My wife's a great cook and she cooks whatever she feels like. I'm like, if she's into the moment, it's going to be good. So whatever she wants to make, fine because she's cooking and a lot of people don't want to cook and she's a way better cook than I am so I figured there's a lot of plates going on she's Korean so she makes all different types of stuff I, I, I'll do the dishes so I do it but uh -huh. sometimes I'll get like well you didn't do the dishes good enough and uh, uh -huh. it's like uh -huh. well maybe you want to do them and but right. you know, yeah I think I think sometimes women need to be mindful that okay the dudes if he's vacuuming and cleaning uh -huh. the toilets and doing the dishes or whatever you know sure. there's going to be a learning curve there yes um, yes. and at least he's doing that stuff where some guys are like, you know what? I have enough money. I either get somebody or I'm just not going to do it. And yes. uh, my value is the money. So how do you address the whole chore thing? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think you bring up a super valid point. I think we need to appreciate our partners for their efforts, right? It's not about the outcome. And so what you talk about is kind of like that nitpicking, right? Like I'm, you're not doing it as well as I would. And so I talk about that in Love Hacks where I don't want there to be any criticism. There needs to be appreciation of like, oh, thank you so much for doing the dishes. And then if as a partner, you don't love the way that they did it, that doesn't need to be said. You can either redo it or you switch tasks. Like, hey, you know what? I'll take over the dishes and you vacuum, right? So, because again, once somebody feels criticized, they have no incentive to continue doing it. So to me, positive behavior begets positive behavior. So let's encourage our partners. Let's, you know, talk about how much we appreciate it and they're more likely to do it. And then again, like, you know, for the person who kind of wants that control and doesn't feel like their partner's doing it the right way, it's, it's letting go of that, of, hey, this is not going to be done, you know, to my standards. And that's okay. It's, if it's 80% good enough, that's, that's great. And that's where we have to leave it. And it sounds like also that if you, you can fall into this organically, because some people gravitate to some stuff more than others, like, yes, I, I don't mind doing the laundry. Well, that's an easy one anyhow, but I don't mind doing that. But yeah, still, you have to dry it and fold it and all mm -hmm. that stuff. I'll do that. And um, the vacuum, I yeah. don't feel like doing the toilets necessarily, but somebody's got to do it. So I think people have to be flexible. And sure. if they can find a happy medium where uh, he likes to do this and he or mm. she likes to do that, that's that's cool. And if not, you have to have the communication about, OK, who's going to do what and how often and kind of how do we, you know, because some people just leave stuff everywhere. Some people yes. are neat and some people aren't neat. 
and that can create another kind of in, in living circumstances. Is that, right. have you come across that as an issue? Like one person's a slob and the other person's like super neat and that becomes yes. a, a, a wedge? Yes, oh, for sure. And so, you know, one thing I talk about in Love Hacks is this, this thing I call like the emotional investment scale, right? So how emotionally invested are we in something? Because one partner might be like, I'm, you know, one through 10, I am at a 10 where I need this house need, I can't function versus somebody else maybe like, yeah, I'm like a two, like I could put things away. It's not, you know, and, and yeah, okay. I can see you're more invested in keeping the house neat versus me just kind of throwing my socks on the floor. So I recognize it's more important for you for this house to be neat. So I think we need to kind of meet in the middle and recognize where, where we are in this scenario. Cause there's, there's usually one who's more invested than the right. other person. And you know, it's, you can't, an old dog can learn new tricks as, as you go along. And if you start to discipline yourself, Maybe it's something mm -hmm. you didn't do all the time. I have a, we have a fireplace, I like to have fires. I make sure I clean the fireplace after every fire, just as yep. a point of some type of little bit of discipline so that I could carry over into other areas, whether it's changing the sheets or doing the mm -hmm. laundry or vacuum, whatever. It's good for guys to yes. get into the flow because somebody's yes. got to do it. And you can't expect women to do all of this stuff. And particularly now where one person might be working remotely, the other person might not be working. It, there's so many different circumstances. The, the flow is so important. Yes. Right. Correct. Yeah. I mean, I think we absolutely need to, well, I think it really comes down to let's remind ourselves that we are a unit here. No one is winning first place at being an individual. I want you to win first place at, at being a couple. And so that starts with, okay, let's, let's be a team. Let's talk about how we can do this better together. I think we forget that sometimes. The amazing one, Kelly Miller, the book is called Love Hacks, and there are simple solutions to most of your common relationship issues. We just talked about a bunch of them and similar to the book, fast, quick, right to the point, common sense. Mm -hmm. Kelly Miller, tell everybody about where they can find out more about you because you have other sure. books and other work and also yes. your website and where they can pick up Love Hacks. Yes, you can find me at Kelly, K-E-L-L-I, Miller, therapy.com. That's my website. My Instagram is the same Kelly Miller therapy, same with Facebook. And you can find the book on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, anywhere books are sold. And yeah, <laughs> I, I, I encourage people to reach out. I love hearing from everybody. And yeah, it was, it was so much fun. Thank you so much for having me on. You did a great job. I hope to see you again, Kelly. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. If you enjoy the guests and content I bring you each and every week to guys, guys, TV and guys, guys, radio. Please support us by subscribing to our channels and platforms. Thank you.